brought to you by the Scott County Public Library. I'll be your host once again, Lincoln, here to showcase just a few movies in the library's collection, some new you may have seen, and others that are older that you may have missed. Today, I am very excited to talk about a few movies that speaks to all you gearheads and racing fans. Two movies that are just the epitome, I think, of racing in general. And it happens to co-spawn in the month of May when all the racing begins to come out of the woodwork all over the world with the Indy 500 and the Grand Prix. I'm super excited to talk about my first film pick that came out in 2019. And it's a film tailor-made for dads, car lovers, anyone who loves a well-made drama with the set piece of the background of the 1960s. That's right, I am talking about James Van Gold, 2019 Oscar-winning film, Ford versus Ferrari. Ford versus Ferrari tells the real life story of Ken Miles and Carol Shelby's friendship as they work together with the Ford Motor Company to build the fastest race car that has ever been created and the chance to unseat the five time consecutive winner of the Le, uh, Le Mans, Enzo Ferrari. Matt Damon and Christian Bell both give exceptional performances in the role and the film takes it's time with the men behind the wheel and you feel the stakes growing long before the action starts at the striped line and it builds a relationship about them and that you care about as the engines rev later on in the film as they start racing at limit of uh, lay man and when the action does finally happen the film lets us feel the engines roar and our bodies shake not letting the car's action be thrown off by overdubbed music and the cars themselves are just as much as a star as, as the actors who drive behind them. The races were done all practically with drivers without relying on hardly any CGI. And during the making of the film, you see real Ford fair lanes on the factory line. Actual vintage Ferraris are being worked on at the Ferrari factory. And you see real Cobras zipping down the line at Le Mans that add a real weight of authenticity to this film. As you can see, I highly enjoy this film. I think it's just a great Sunday afternoon racing film with a heart of gold, and it's just so much to love about this film. Next up, we have what many people believe to be the greatest racing movie of all time in the stylish, epic 1966 Grand Prix. Directed by John Frankenheimer in 1966, he had already been a household name with many films such as The Birdman of Alcatraz and The Tree and Candidate. Now, with years of experience and critical success under his belt, he was shooting his most expensive film by far and for the first time shooting away from black and white in 70 millimeter color. Following the journey of the American driver, Pete Aaron, Grand Prix took to showing the performance and the personal dramas faced with the drivers in Formula One racing. Initially, the part had gone to Steve McQueen before infighting with producer Ed Lewis had led him to back out, ultimately leading him to make his next racing movie the next year, Le Mans. Eventually, the role fell into future Rockford star, file star, James Gardner, after it was rumored that Robert Redford had turned down the role itself. James Gardner was in need of a major film epic after doing a bunch of smaller films. So signing on as a washed out driver attempting to make a comeback on the circuit with a director like Frankenheimer was exactly what he was wanting. A rocky pre-production started with Ferrari refusing to be a part of the movie, not giving any of their cars or names, especially when it was a time when Ferrari was synonymous with anything that had to do with racing in the Grand Prix. There was no way to make a film without the use of Ferrari or any of their cars. So Frankenheimer did what only thing he could do. He cut up an hour's worth of footage, drove down to the factory in Marinello, and viewed it for Enzo, uh, Enzo Ferrari himself. After watching the film, Enzo Ferrari immediately gave it his blessing, and they were allowed to use all of his cars for the making of the film. And one of the beautiful things about this film is during the making, to achieve the realness that Frankenheimer wanted, the film crew actually had to invent rigs to put on the cars while the actors and the racers were driving them. And they were actually driving on the real tracks in France at that time that was used for the Grand Prix. In the end, what was created was a stylish epic that won Oscars for editing, sound, and sound effects, as well as becoming one of the top grossing films of 1966 and launching John Frankenheimer even further into his already esteemed career. 
All of this week's films are now available at the public library, and I encourage you to search them out and decide for yourself whether you like them or not. And you can always find every single episode of Real Talk on our website, Facebook, or our YouTube. And this has been Lincoln here for Real Talk, reminding you to watch more movies.